Como Show, all the top tunes. Hey, Mulligan. What are you doing? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> you give them just what they get in the big house. It's the Joey and Rory Show. This week's special guest, Jerry Sally. This week's episode brought to you by Lion Chevrolet in Lewisburg, Tennessee. And now, a woman who looks good in anything and a man who's personally trying to bring overalls back into style. Here they are, Joey and Rory! Me, I'm just a singer Though I may be well known The truth is I'd be nothing Without the power of a song I've been blessed with fame and fortune Oh, but in the end A song's what I wish I could have been A song lives forever It never, ever dies So many lives Words and melody Will always be Long after we are gone Oh, how I wish I could live The life of a song And take someone from China to Carolina cotton field I could comfort every soldier hung on a homeless home I could change the world if I was just a song A song sentiment and a beautiful song written by Jason Matthews and Rebecca Lynn Howard. It sure is. Don't y'all go anywhere. We'll be right back for more great music and fun. This week's special guest on the Joey and Rory Show, Jerry Sally. My name is Jerry Sally, and I'm originally from a little town in southern Ohio called Chillicothe. And I know this sounds crazy, but I really don't feel like I ever had a choice in my career path. I, I knew at a very early age that I wanted to play and sing and write music for a living. My dad played five-string banjo growing up, so I was exposed to bluegrass and country and gospel music at an early age. I was kind of a strange kid, I guess. Every time I would buy a new record growing up, the first thing I would want to do is look at the credits on the back to see who the songwriters were and who wrote these songs. And uh, 
I was influenced by a lot of different folks, George Jones, Merle Haggard, Dolly Parton, and of course Tom T. Hall, who wrote all of his own songs. I've been very blessed over the years to have uh, over 300 songs recorded uh, by folks from Elton John to Loretta Lynn, from Stephen Curtis Chapman to C.C. Winans in the bluegrass, country, and gospel genres. And I've always performed all those years as well. Back in the 90s, I actually had a record deal here in Nashville. Through that experience, um, I decided that uh, I think I wanted to be a songwriter first. <laughs> um, nothing against all that other than it was not in, in my control. And uh, I, my songwriting career was actually taken off at that point in time. So when that didn't work out, I decided I wanted to be a songwriter and stay at home. And now through the years, as my kids have gotten older and, and moved off, I've been able to parlay my songwriting career into a, an artist career where I'm out on the road more and more than I've ever been and I'm enjoying it so much recording the music I want to record the way I want to record it. Well, the song Paper and Pen was actually written several years ago. I co-wrote that with my dear friend Allison Mellon. And uh, we started out writing a gospel song that day and I just couldn't get into it. I kept playing this three-quarter time on my guitar started singing the very first line just off the top of my head. It was originally recorded by a young lady named Alicia Nugent in the early 2000s uh, on Rounder Records, and she had a pretty good hit with it in Bluegrass. And it's always been one of my favorite songs, so when I recorded my new project, I decided to record it on there. And actually, Alicia and Bradley Walker, my, another dear friend of mine, are singing the harmonies on the song with me. There's a letter in a shoebox In a dresser she keeps locked But she's never read it All the way through It was the last one he wrote her She was sure it was over From all that he told her in the first line or two He said times are hard now Got some things left to sort out And a man and his freedom Don't easily part Well that's where she stopped reading her soul was bleeding, so she chose her weapon and went for his heart. With paper and pen, she got her last words in. I never loved you was the lie she wrote him. He couldn't. The reply he received What a sad tragedy For good love to win Ah, oh, who needs a knife When you can take someone's life With paper and pen Well, they say he went crazy In just a few days He got on the bottle And went out of his mind To this day she don't know In the letter that he wrote He asked for the very last line with paper and pen she got her last words in I never loved you was the lie she wrote him he couldn't believe the reply he received what a sad tragedy for good love to win Ah, oh, who needs a knife When you can take someone's life With paper and pen Ah, oh, who needs a knife
And you can take someone's life with paper and pen. The only thing better than a hot cup of coffee is a hot cup of coffee and something special from Marcy Joe's. Let's check in down there now and see what they've got on the menu today. Y'all come on in. Stay wherever you want. People probably know Marcy Joe's most for our great breakfast and lunches we have, but we're also a bakery and the homemade items that we make here are hard to beat. It's hard to top our chocolate Coca-Cola cake, but this one is close. Mm -hmm. This is our chocolate Daffy cake. I love the Daffy cake. It's one of my favorite cakes that we do, or you do actually. I've never made it, so this is gonna be fun. Well, good. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So in here, we have our bowl with our dry ingredients. It's mm -hmm. our flour, our sugar, our salt, our baking soda, and our six tablespoons of cocoa. So next, we're gonna add our wet ingredients. Now, what's neat about this recipe is everything that you're gonna have in your pantry already, most likely you're gonna be able to make this cake with. So you don't have to go to the store and buy the special ingredients. Well, that makes it great. It does. We're gonna add a 3 fourths cup of your vegetable oil in here. Next, two cups of water. Wow. That's a lot of water, but it I is. love it because this cake is so moist yeah. and fluffy. But what makes it so fluffy is the vinegar. Now, I use apple cider vinegar. Oh. Do you know any other cake that calls for no, vinegar? No, I don't, actually. We're gonna do four tablespoons. One, two, three. Four. That looks good. Okay. <laughs> I and love your measuring. Two teaspoons of uh, vanilla oh. here. Teaspoons. That looks about right okay. to me. And that's it. That's all we're gonna do here. We're gonna mix this up really good. We're gonna put this in our um, flour pans, floured um, round baking pans here. You can make this in a sheet cake or you can make this in cupcakes. Yeah. Which remind me of growing up and yeah. having the school birthday parties yeah. and mom would show up with these cupcakes with Daffy cake. It was gorgeous. But then, what Marcy's gonna show you how to make is the frosting. It's the frosting, which is my favorite part. I remember going to your mom's house a couple years ago and she would make this frosting and mm -hmm. I love it. And she put it between graham crackers, which made it really good. Oh, it's a nice little treat that you have. Yes. So what yes. are you gonna start with there for your So icing? anyway, with the frosting, you're gonna use the Crisco shortening, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna use a little bit of salt, vanilla extract, confectioner's sugar, and a little bit of milk. And then you're gonna get your, oh, and some uh, Hershey's cocoa. Yes, yes. And then you're gonna mix it up with a blender, and it's gonna come out like this, really, really fluffy and airy. It's really good. Now we're gonna show you guys here. We've already got one of the layers done, and halfway iced. Mm -hmm. Next, this is the second layer that we're going to put on top. And look how nice and glossy That's that beautiful. is. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to go ahead and place this on top. When you flour and oil your pans with you know some shortening and then you put flour uh -huh. in them, they come out so much nicer than if you use just regular spray. So go ahead and let's top this, Mars. That's as you're beautiful. Topping this, we'll go ahead and get this going. So. Well, we've been traveling a lot. Can you believe it's just, I'll tell you what, Doing this TV show has been nice to come home to. I know. I miss having you here. Do you miss being here? I do. Uh -huh. I miss seeing all the people. Yeah. I mean, you get to. I mean, you get to see everybody almost every day. Yeah. But for me, I just really love coming back and waiting on tables, and you've had quite a few new people show up. We too. have. We have. I've met so many people. I'm loving it. I yes, love it. Absolutely. I love this cake because you can just kind of. You know, it just forms with it. Mm -hmm. Whichever way you want to put the frosting, it's really neat. Now, do we have a special taste tester here today? We Marsh? do. Karen has been coming in here. Her and her husband, Wayne, for a couple years, and she is such a great lady. Karen, you want to come up and take a taste of our Daffy cake? Let's go ahead and move. I'm going to move this out of the way. Yeah, actually. absolutely. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How it's are you? so good to see you. Here. How long have you been coming here to Marcy Joe's oh, now? A couple of years now. A couple of years? Oh, good. And do you have a favorite dessert that you like here? Uh, sticky buns. Sticky buns. Oh, oh yeah, yes. the sticky buns are awesome. Well, let's go ahead and have you here, taste I this and right see what you them. think. If that even okay. is close to the Coca-Cola cake. It's got a different texture. It's not quite and as it's rich. so light and fluffy, it's really too. It's very good. You like that? Very good. Oh, very wonderful. That's great. Very good. Well, thanks for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank Enjoy you that cake you Thank have. Thank you. All thanks, right. Karen. Well, there you go, folks, our chocolate Daffy cake here at Marcy Joe's, where we're changing lives one bite at a time.
Me and my buddy Troy Jones come out of a restaurant down there in Nashville one day. Been in there eating some lunch and walked out in the parking lot and this pigeon flew off one of them big tall buildings right over Troy. Dropped his business right there on Troy's shoulder. A brand new shirt. I said, Troy, I'll go back in that restaurant and get some toilet paper. He said, oh, when that bird will be long gone the time you get back. Go from rags to riches. I've been writing songs since I was a young boy, and I still love to sit down with my guitar and a pen or laptop and see what might show up. It seems like in other genres of music, like pop or rock, the melody or the groove of the song are the most important thing. But in country music, the story and the lyric is always king. That's what I love so much about country music, because of the stories that are told. My mother would probably tell you that as soon as I was old enough to start putting rhymes together, I began telling stories in song. I've developed my own particular way of writing songs, and for the last 10 years or so, I've pretty much always done it this way. I start with a blank page, and what I like to do is imagine that I'm not only the writer of the song, I'm also the first person to ever hear the song, like a reader turning the pages of a new book. I try to just let the story unfold naturally. A lot of songwriters, probably most of them in fact, write from a hook or a title. Then they craft the song around that title or line. I like to work the opposite way, where I start with the first line and I just let the song unfold line by line. That way I never know where the story's going or what the title is until it shows up. It's more exciting to me that way. It feels more like magic, and I love the magic of songwriting where you're working hard to write a great song, but what you really want is something to show up in the song that you never in your wildest dreams thought would happen. Like in the song Josephine, when the soldier says he shot a boy his own son's age. Sometimes when things like that happen, it gives me chills while I'm writing it, or it brings tears to my eyes because I'm so touched by what the character has done or said. And the truth is, I believe I'm a good songwriter, but I know God is a better one. And ultimately, these three-minute little movies are just gifts from God, and sometimes if you let yourself believe in the magic of them and what He can do, a story will unfold that can change the world, or at least it changes your world. And that's happened many times for me. Sometimes those songs go on to be big hits, and sometimes they end up being words on a piece of paper or a computer screen that no one will ever hear or see. Now, not all of my songs are written from the first line. Every now and then, one comes from a thought or a phrase that just hits you, and that becomes the title of the song. Which brings me to the song that actually built the big red barn here at our farm, where we do a lot of the filming of this TV show. A barn Joey and I call Some Barn. Seven or eight years ago, I was riding with a good friend of mine named Paul Overstreet. On one particular morning, he and I were sitting, drinking coffee, and talking about writing a song for Kenny Chesney, who was a friend of his, who had mentioned that he was going to be recording a beach album soon and was looking for songs. Well, Paul and I talked for a while and kicked around a couple of ideas, and then one of us said, some beach, and it made us laugh. And we realized that was a pretty good idea, and we started throwing out lines, and this fun story started unfolding. State running 30 minutes late, singing Margaritaville, mind in my own. Some foreign car driving dude with a road rage attitude pulled up beside me, talking on his cell phone. He started yelling at me like I did something wrong. He flipped me the bird, and then he was gone. Some beach, some. Casting shade over an empty chair. There's palm trees growing and warm breezes blowing. I can picture myself right there on some beach somewhere. Will I circle the parking lot? 
trying to find a spot big enough I could park my old truck. Some man with a big cigar was getting into his car. I stopped and I waited for him to back up. From out of nowhere, a Mercedes Benz came cruising up and whipped right in. Like all afternoon Till the nurse finally said The docs are ready for you You're not gonna feel a thing We'll give you some Novocaine That tooth will be fine In a minute or two Then he stuck that needle Down deep in my gum He started drilling Before I was numb Some beach Somewhere Sunset burning up the atmosphere There's music and dancing And love is romancing In the salty evening air On some beach Yeah, somewhere Hey, on some songwriter honey well thank you let's sing a piece of one of our favorites believing our dreams will take us somewhere still being ourselves if we ever get there that's important to me that's important to me don't forget about what's most important to you i'm joey and i'm rory tune in again next week same place same time Closed captioning for The Joey and Rory Show, generously provided by Quilter's Warehouse. Milk House. Media.